China rumors prove true. Mark Arpelis is ordered to the U.S. Neo and B offers an explanation. And Ross Ulbricht uses the new IRS ruling to dispute charges. Hello, I'm Jared Kennan. Here's what's happening today in Money and Tech. Wall Street Journal sources have confirmed that the rumors are true. The People's Bank of China is requiring the nation's commercial banks and payment service providers to shut down trading accounts within two weeks. Further proof arrived today in an announcement from China-based Bitcoin exchange BTC38 that it has indeed received official notices from banks and third-party payment providers and will be suspending its services. No similar news has yet been heard from China's largest exchange, BTC China, Huobi, and OKCoin. But we will keep you abreast of any updates to this story. Meanwhile, cryptocurrency exchange Vault of Satoshi today announced the launch of coin-to-coin -coin trading, which will allow its users to trade from any coin to any coin without first having to start with Bitcoin and Litecoin. This move will provide users greater flexibility on the platform while reducing the exchange's dependency on fiat currencies. The U.S. Bankruptcy Court has ruled that Mt. Gox CEO Mark Karpelis must travel to Dallas, Texas this month to take part in his formal deposition, rather than in Taipei, Taiwan, where he had hoped it would take place. The purpose of this hearing will be to determine whether Karpelis should be granted an extension of U.S. Chapter 15 bankruptcy protection, which has so far shielded the company from lawsuits threatening the assets of its Japanese entity. Carpellis himself, as well as the company's U.S. entity, are not protected under this bankruptcy filing and still face several legal issues, including a U.S. class action lawsuit. Neo and B CEO Danny Brewster released a statement this morning to address the growing concerns this week since the Havelock Investment Exchange announced that they are halting trading of the Neo and B fund due to a high possibility of questionable trading activity. Brewster, who has been MIA since the news broke, offered a lengthy explanation for his absence in a statement today primarily that he's been away on business trying to, quote, raise additional capital for the business through the sale of my equity as we had run out of liquidity. Brewster also cited forum posts containing threats against his daughter as reasons for his recent silence. The defense attorney for alleged Silk Road mastermind, Ross Ulbrich, has submitted a fresh 64-page filing to the District Court of the Southern District of New York, requesting the dismissal of four charges against his client. In particular, the report challenges the money laundering charge. Given the wording used in both FinCEN and recent IRS guidance stating that Bitcoin does not qualify as a money instrument under the law. New altcoins MapleCoin, DinarCoin, and KarmaCoin have entered the market with high aspirations to strengthen national living standards and raise philanthropic donations for Canada, Iraq, and the Middle East, and even improve U.S.-Russia tensions with the KarmaCoin fundraiser playfully named Send Vladimir Putin to Disney World. We wrap up our coverage of last week's Coin Summit with the final interviews today, along with a comprehensive list of all our Coin Summit videos for your easy viewing. Find those as well as more information on today's news stories at moneyandtech.com. I'm Jared Kenna, and this has been Money and Tech's Daily News Update.